Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Wonderful. Now, just once say how sweet it is, and we'll get on with this. How <laughs> sweet it is! <laughs> you know, you know, must be a kick. You did the Honeymooners in uh, what year exactly? The, the first uh, original 39 episodes. I think around uh, 1951. 51. We started. Only did 39 episodes. 39. Of the half hours. And now you have a whole new generation of fans, the youngsters, of course, who were just born and are now seeing them all over. It must give you a great kick. It is. To see a whole it's, new generation uh, of fans. Very gratifying to think that something you did 30 years ago shows up and yeah. is a hit. Yeah. yeah, and a big hit. Yeah. And a big, big hit. You know, this is, a, this is the first time. I've been doing this show for 23 years. Never had you on this show. I don't understand it, John. Yeah. <laughs> The only, the only thing I can figure is, I, I was waiting to find out if this show was a hit. <laughs> You're out here doing a picture with, uh, with young Tom Hanks, right? Yes, yeah. and he is a fine actor. Yeah. Great actor. Now, tell me about your friend Bacon here. You've known each other for a number of years, and you both... Uh, the book is filled with a lot of your, uh, uh, for the lack of a better word, pranks or... Uh, escapades. E escapades, evenings out. Um, matter of fact, you, you kind of wrote this uh, book over sharing a little, little scotch at one time. Well, another, we, right? we had a few affectives. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Jim is a good man with the yes, thing, he is. you know. So he's very nice company. Matter, fact, matter we, of fact, when you were doing the toy, didn't they tell him to... Uh... Oh, they considered him a bad companion for me. <laughs> they thought if he showed up, I'd get stewed. <laughs> And they were right. <laughs> you know, I, I was reading the book last night, and uh, I came into your dressing room a while just before the show tonight. And I said, you remember a show. Oh, John. We can get that one out of the way right off. <laughs> yeah. You've had many successes, but you did a television show in 1961. Oh. The show itself went on one time. It was called You're in the Picture. Oh. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up yes. was because I was also a part of the show. You were the host, if I remember, and you sat over to the right of the stage, and you sat at a little table, and you had your little coffee cup. And they, I think I was on the show. I think Arthur Treacher. Arthur Treacher. The late Milt Kamen. Jan Sterling. Now, the idea of the show was they had the television audience could see at home, and the studio audience could see a picture. The celebrities would come, and we put our heads through a hole in the picture from the back. We didn't know what the picture was. Good God. Yeah. I was one of those people. And uh, you would ask questions, and we would ask questions of you, what we were doing. Are we an animal and so forth? <laughs> and it really did not go too well. <laughs> and I remember one of the questions I asked you about halfway through. I said, would you tell me why I've got my head through this hole in this picture? <laughs> the critics took the show apart, and next week you came on the stage and did one of the funniest half hours on television because you didn't do that show. You just sat, sat down and apologized. I came out and apologized to the audience for committing such a terrible crime. This was the biggest bomb ever put on television. <laughs> and when I went to the executives of CBS and I said, uh, I got to go on next week and apologize for this. They said, Wait, we don't allow anybody to go on and apologize for anything we put on. And I said, well, this week you're gonna. <laughs> and um, I had a lot of fun that, that oh, night. It was, it was wonderful. You came out and sent there. It was one of the funniest half hours I've ever seen. You only did, we talk, so let's talk about the honeymoon a little bit. You did 39, and they came to you and wanted you to do an, another season. Yeah. And you said no at the time. Uh, they people didn't won't, believe people me. have always they... wondered why you didn't, because it's so successful. Well, we were running out of ideas. And uh, I like the honeymooners. I like doing them. And I didn't want to denigrate them by, you know, forcing scenes that didn't mean anything. Right. So I wanted to quit. And they didn't be believe me. They thought I had another job someplace. Right. But I didn't. And I'm glad I did stop then. Because what we had done was good. And if we had gone any further, we might have spoiled it. Yeah. 
All these characters, I saw the piece that Morley Saver did with you on 60 Minutes. All the characters you do, from Ralph Cramden to Joe the bartender to the poor soul, really came out of your background in the early years in Brooklyn, didn't they? Well, yes, uh, the honeymooners especially, yeah. because there were a thousand Nortons <laughs> and a thousand Cramdons. And uh, Reggie, of course, uh, I did in burlesque, and I did the poor soul in, on Broadway. Right. So they, they fit in pretty good with television. Which of those characters, of all of them, uh, is the closest to Jackie Gleason? Well, you, I, can you most identify with? I guess I'd have to say Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had the train set up where the train came out with a little jigger of booze. We're going to take a short break. We're coming right back. Jack White's, uh, Jack Club White's 18 Club. 18 Club? Greatest nightclub in the world. Was that one of your early shops? Yeah. Uh, you weren't allowed to do an act. You, it was all ad lib. And every night there were big stars, Robert Taylor, Jimmy Cagney, and they'd come in and we'd make fun of them. And uh, it was a hot spot. All the columnists came in every night. It was a joy working there. Didn't you used to hustle fool after you got out of high school? Yes. Well, no, when I was in grammar school. I oh, grammar school. <laughs> I started out as a rat boy when I was about nine years old. And they let me play in the back table. And I got pretty good at it. And when somebody came in and wanted to play somebody, they picked me. Right. I was the house boy. And then on graduation day in grammar school, you know, they gave you those little gold pens. Yeah. And I used to play the kids for their gold pens. <laughs> and I'd get in a nice box of them and go down to the hot shop and turn them in. <laughs> so, so this came up when you did The Hustler. In which you were nominated for an Academy Award. Well, that came in handy, shooting pool. Oh, yes, sure Minnesota fans. Sure it did. And Paul began to learn to play pool very well. Yeah. You got William Moscone, somebody said, to kind yeah. of give him some lessons. he's the greatest. Did you do in grammar school Little Red Riding Hood in a Yiddish accent? Is that true? You certainly have done your research. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. And uh, that's when I knew, well, I knew I wanted to be in show business before then. Uh, my father took me to a vaudeville show, and at intermission, they put the house lights on, and I was sitting in the first row, and I stood up, and I turned around, and I faced the audience, and I knew that that's the way I should look for the rest of my life, and uh, then the next thing was the school play, right, and I got a couple of laughs, and that did it. That always does, doesn't it, for, for oh, comedians? Yeah. There is nothing like a big yammo coming in. <laughs> a big yuck. A lot of the book is devoted to uh, your old friend, uh, whom I know, of course, not as well as you, Toot Shore, and his, uh, his saloon. Toots would never call it a restaurant. It was a saloon. He was a saloon keeper, right? <laughs> he sure was. Um, <laughs> and you, when, when Toots died, I, I read that you sent a, a wreath that said, uh, Save me a table. Yeah. Is that right? Were the, were the bouts, uh, the drinking bouts as, as large? Did you ever miss a performance because of it? No, never did. Never missed a show. And uh, I'm not advocating that everybody should drink. Right. It just worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the gentleman on my right has had a taste of two. Yes, he will. <laughs> Uh, I was reading in the book, when you, when, you, when you do the shows, you were one of those people who got an instinctive ability to look at a piece of material, a script, and then go out and, and do it. You didn't particularly like rehearsing. No, I hated to rehearse. And I had a stand-in who was funnier than I was. He would do the sketches with the performers. I'd go through it with them once, and then he would do it. Uh, I just didn't like to rehearse. I thought it took something away from the performance. But there were some wonderful moments on the show where things would happen. In fact, they oh. played some of those recently with the, with the old, uh, the lost episodes. Connie, one time, was trying to get out the door, and it was stuck, so we went out the window. Yeah. <laughs> Reasonable. Yeah. Went down the fire escape and came back up. <laughs> hey, he's good. Connie is one of the greatest comedians of, and dramatic actors of all time. Yeah, he is. Uh... <laughs> but you... And Aud Audrey Meadows, Ooh. sensation. You originally turned Audrey down, didn't you? She came in and auditioned for the part, if I remember, looking very pretty, and you said, no, she's too pretty for the part, and then somebody gave you a picture where she kind of... Uh... Well, that's the legend. I'll go yeah. along with it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sounds good. But you're a, you like to act, don't you? You're you're a good actor. You have a lot of depth as an actor. As, as, well, as a I serious like that. An actor. Uh, I think that comedians. It's a strange thing. Uh, many comedians have become good actors, but I don't know of any good actors who became great comedians. That's true. Absolutely true. Let's talk about money a little bit. Toots used to tell me that. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Toots used to tell me before you made it big, you used to run up tabs at his place and, and, and hand out tips even when you didn't have it. Well, uh, he said to me, he said, if you want anything, go ahead and sign for it. So I said, all right. So I signed a tab one night. It was for about $60, and I put a $40 tip. <laughs> and he came flying over. He says, what are you doing? I said, keep this up, and I'll give you back your pen. <laughs> so you just signed the tabs? Oh, yes. Right. We're going to take a break. We're going to be right back. Stay where you are.